The current number one video on my channel was my very first video with over 3 million views currently. This is my crispy chicken thigh video. In this video, I showed a complete meal, crispy chicken thighs, a nice honey mustard sauce, uh, asparagus, and uh, crispy potatoes all made in the oven, really super delicious. This is a meal that we eat all the time at home. Uh, everyone loved this recipe, but the video is not that great. It's a little long and the recipe could use a little tightening up. Well, here comes a perfect time to give you an updated recipe. Hopefully you enjoy this video just as much as you like the first one. Let's get cooking. I have a lot of redemption points, and the number one was that I did not mix the spices in advance. So since then, I've invented bay seasoning, and I keep this stuff around all the time. It's a blend of garlic powder, onion powder, salt, and pepper. There's a link to the video recipe in the description. Uh, I also did not mix the spices in a bowl before, and I was putting them on individually. Sometimes I do that in my videos, but I got beaten up in that video because my editing wasn't too tight. So in this bowl is going to go some bay seasoning, some smoked paprika, some Italian seasoning, and this did not appear in the original recipe. This is some baking powder. So baking powder on chicken skin makes it crispy. So we're going to throw that in and a little bit more base seasoning. We can never get enough of that. And we are going to pre-mix this. So for everyone in the comment section who ate me alive on that one, here it is. Oh, and I'm a little nervous here. And now we're going to take our chicken thighs. We're going to put them inside of this hotel pan. Hotel pans are really great to mix large quantities of chicken like this with uh, spices. And now we're going to drizzle on some olive oil. We're going to use that as a binder. Now we're going to sprinkle on a really generous portion of that pre-mixed spice blend. And once we throw that in there, we're going to use our hands to mix it up. And we're just going to keep mixing until these are very well coated. And we just keep mixing and pushing them together and rubbing them until the spice looks about equal. So now on a baking sheet with a raised grate because we want to get air underneath, we're going to take these chicken thighs. We're going to fold the skin underneath because the skin really is the best part of this chicken thigh. So we want to get that skin on the bottom. We would never trim this stuff off. It really makes this dish shine. So we're gonna take these, and we're gonna place these really neatly on this baking tray, and these are gonna go in a 375 degree convection oven for the first 20 to 25 minutes just to get them going. Now we're gonna make our honey mustard sauce. So this is the second redemption point. I didn't really give the ingredients for the honey mustard sauce. I thought it was a nice addition to the video, but here it is. So we're gonna take some honey, and now we're gonna put three kinds of mustard in here. So this is just a spicy brown mustard to give us like a nice mustard blend. Next mustard up is going to be a whole grain or stone ground mustard. This is going to add a really nice texture to the mustard because it's got those whole mustard seeds in there. And now we're going to go with my absolute favorite to make sauces, the Dijon for that nice kick. Dijon is probably my go-to mustard for making sauces. Now that we got the three tenors of mustard inside the bowl, we're going to go with some mayo. I'm using some avocado oil mayonnaise here. You can use whatever mayonnaise you like. I know people love their Dukes and their Q pie. But uh, I like avocado oil mayonnaise, so that's what I got. And Ian's going to go just a little bit of lemon juice, and I'm going to hold my hand like this just to make sure none of the seeds go in there. And now for some more acidity, we're going to put a little splash of some apple cider vinegar. We're also going to put in some fresh chives. I took these right out of a flower box in my garden. There we go. It's going to add a really nice green pop of color and a little bit of freshness, a little pinch of salt. And now we're going to add an ingredient that wasn't in the original recipe. This is a little red cayenne pepper for a little bit of heat. And now we're going to give this a whisk until it becomes nice and creamy and smooth. Look how beautiful that is. We can always make sure that we taste. This was too much mustard, not enough honey, so we added just a little bit more honey. Okay, now this is good. This is going to go inside of a container, and we're just going to put this in the fridge while we attend to the rest of our chicken and our potatoes and our asparagus. Next up on this American Dinner Classic are going to be some little potatoes. So these are the tri-colored ones like I used in the original recipe. And now we're going to cut these potatoes. The best way to cut a potato is to pull it just right on the cutting board. And if you want to go a little faster, you can do them two at a time. And if my math is correct, that'll save you half the time. 
And you can see I'm just pulling it right down because potatoes tend to get stuck to the knife. So these are going to go inside of a bowl and we're going to season them with a little olive oil and some of that same spice blend that we put on top of the chicken. We're going to give these a mix so they're nice and evenly coated. And then we're going to spread them on a baking sheet lined with aluminum foil and parchment paper. This setup is my go-to setup every single night that I use a baking sheet because it really helps you not have to scrub nasty stuff that's burnt all over the baking sheet. These potatoes are going to take a touch longer than 30 minutes, so they're going to go in the oven right now while we check on our chicken and give it its first flip. So the chicken's been in there for about 20, 25 minutes, and you can see it's starting to take on some color, but it's still really pale. But this is where the magic comes in because this is the technique that's really highlighted in the first video that we're going to take the skin on chicken, we're going to flip it upside down, and as we flip it, you're going to see that the fat is going to render to the bottom of the chicken. And the beauty behind this recipe, what makes the crispy chicken, is that the fat is rendering down onto the chicken. And now we're going to go with the power move here. This is the re-season. So we're going to give a sprinkle of that seasoning, just a little light on top so it binds to the chicken fat that's already on the bottom. And now we're going to check our potatoes. After about 15, 20 minutes in there, we're going to give these a little light toss. So we're just going to get under them with a spatula. We're going to toss them around, possibly expose some new areas, and this is going to go back in the oven. I'm also slightly increasing the temperature of the oven as I'm taking the chicken in and out. So now the chicken has been flipped once, and it's now it's browned on the underside. So now what we're going to do is we're going to flip the chicken back to the original side, and you can notice that the chicken fat has been rendering all over that chicken skin. So the chicken skin is slowly cooking, rendering out its fat, swimming in its own fat, and then cooking in it. And we're going to go re-seasoning on the top too. This is really going to add a nice spice crust to the outside of this chicken. So these are going to go back in the oven for a final 15 to 25 minutes until we're a nice golden brown on the top. Whenever the potatoes are done and these are crispy enough, we're going to pull them out and we're going to let these cool. Letting them cool is going to let the outside of the potato get a little crispy. We're going to set these aside and then we're going to go back to our chicken. And you're going to see this chicken has taken on a really nice, dark, brown, beautiful color. But the chicken's not quite crispy yet because the outside needs to dry off a little bit. So while our potatoes are cooling on the outside in our chicken, we're going to make quick work of this asparagus. We're going to snap off the ends of the asparagus just to get rid of the woody end. Then we're going to push these all together. We're going to take a knife. We're going to trim the ends very nicely. It's one of the best parts about this dish is the plating. It looks really nice, even though it's a really simple dish. This is also going to go on a baking tray with aluminum foil and parchment paper. We're going to give this a little drizzle with olive oil. And this is just going to be a little bit more simple. We're just going to do the base seasoning. But if I wanted to, I totally could have used the other seasoning as well. The essence of this recipe is saving you time, so we're not going to dirty anything. We're going to mix these right on top of the baking tray, and these are going to go inside of the air fryer instead of the oven, but you could totally put these in the oven as well. The air fryer is just going to really do this nice and fast. So I'm going to put the air fryer on like 400, and they're going to go in there for probably less than 10 minutes. One of the great parts about asparagus is that it's a very fast cooking vegetable. It responds really well to high heat, so these are done and ready to hit the plate. So first is going to go on our honey mustard, and we're going to give this a little bit of a fancy schmancy smear. And we're just pulling it right across the plate. Down goes that nice piping hot asparagus. Some of these crispy potatoes. More crispy potatoes. And the star of the show, that beautiful chicken thigh. We're going to sprinkle on some of those chives that we have inside the honey mustard sauce. And we're going to put a little lemon zest on top for a little color and just a little bit more flavor depth. We had too many potatoes, so let's uh, clean this up for the thumbnail. Now, how amazing does this dish look? And you have to consider that there are no dirty dishes. All we did was take that aluminum foil and parchment paper and throw it all in the garbage. All you got to do is clean that wire rack. It's a little pain in the butt, but it's only one thing. Just looking at this plate warms my heart because I know that all of this at Chef Ange, it started with this dish. Uh, 
and it looks absolutely delicious and it smells amazing. I'm really excited to try it, even though this is something I've had a million times, but you know, good food, it's, it's always exciting to try. So you know, let's cut into, cut into that chicken, get some of that nice, beautiful, crispy skin. You know, one of the best things about that crispy skin is it gets crispy on the outside, but it retains the moisture and the heat inside that chicken. So uh, let's try to get a little bit of everything in that bite. So a little bit of these asparagus, one of these potatoes. I'm gonna rub this in our nice honey mustard sauce. Mm, this looks delicious. Mm. Chicken skin is just magical. The chicken thigh is probably the best part of the chicken. Mm, this is so good. Mm, the honey mustard sauce is nice and sweet and flavorful. Really pairs really nicely with like the savoriness of the chicken. Mm, another wonderful bite, a little bit of everything. I mean, even these potatoes, crispy on the outside, creamy on the inside. Mm, dip those right in that sauce too. Mm, this is such a really nice dish. If you wanna check out the original recipe, check this right here. And if you're into chicken thighs, check out my stuffed chicken thighs recipe. That's a really, really nice one. Nice crispy skin on that. I hope to see you there. Thanks.